Hey everyone, this is Jay Todd coming to you from Las Vegas and on, babe. Holy crap! I, on, babe. I thought you were dead. Hey, I'm, does it look like I'm dead, baby? No way. The, the, the Elvis Presley, ladies and gentlemen. Jay Todd, Elvis Presley, here's what's happening. This week of gambling, baby, right here. This Week in Gambling has been made possible by On Tilt Radio, the number one ranked poker radio website and the only true poker radio social network with more original programming and syndicated content than anyone. Visit ontiltradio.com. Hello, friends, and welcome to This Week in Gambling. I'm your host, Jay Todd, and on this episode, we're going to have stories from bookmakers William Hill and Sporting Bet, plus an interview with the American Gaming Association about their stance on internet gambling. But first, this week's big story. New Jersey continues to push forward with their plans to offer sports betting within the state, this despite opposition and pending litigation from just about every major sports league in the United States. New Jersey says they are now prepared to start issuing licenses for sports betting as soon as January. Upon hearing this announcement, the NCAA, which is involved in the pending legal action against the state, said that they will be pulling all championship events out of New Jersey including the upcoming Women's Basketball Regional in March. A little tit for tat, I guess. No pun intended, ladies. While all this drama unfolds, you may recall that two weeks ago, I told you that bookmaker William Hill was attempting to purchase Sporting Bet and had made an offer which was flat rejected. However, after some working with the numbers, this week, they made that deal happen. Details have it that William Hill upped its offer to 530 million pounds, or about 856, carry the four, yeah, 856 million US dollars. But the real deal clincher was William Hill threw in tickets to see Springsteen in New Jersey. Yeah, gonna be a hell of a show. There's always so much more going on in the world of gambling than I can possibly cover in my 10 minutes with you every week. So be sure to visit thisweekingambling.com for more stories like these. While I have your attention for a moment, I wanted to send a shout out to our friends at TheGamblingGurus.com. If you're a player interested in the history of Vegas and casinos, there are fascinating articles over there on gambling legends like Bugsy Siegel, for instance. So check them out at TheGamblingGurus.com. Bless my soul, or what's wrong with me? I live to you, dude. Like a net losing tree, a fuzzy tree. I'm in love. I'm all shook up. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, While I was attending the Global Gaming Expo a few weeks ago, the American Gaming Association had been very vocal about trying to get some sort of federal online gambling legislation passed in the United States 
either this year during a lame duck session or at latest next year. Fortunately for you guys, I was able to catch up with a representative of theirs at the event and talk to them about this very topic. Hey everyone, I'm here with Judy Patterson, the Senior Vice President and Executive Director of the American Gaming Association. Uh, Ms. Patterson, thank you so much for coming on the program. Um, you know, I've been going out and saying that I'm not very enthusiastic watching politics for the past several years in relation to gaming, that anything is going to get done positive uh, in this upcoming lame duck session. There's some talk about Harry Reid and John Kyle pushing together some kind of online poker legislation. And Mr. Ferencov made a statement about that the other day, saying the AGA was still optimistic it could get done. Do you guys believe that anything could possibly happen before the close of 2012 for online poker? Well, let's just step back for a minute and talk about why we need to get something done. And <clears throat> we've just spent the last three days at Global Gaming Expo, which is the industry's largest international trade show. And one thing we've learned from all of the experts who have been here <clears throat> is that um, the United States right now is, in spite of the federal laws that are currently in place, in spite of the Justice Department crackdowns that your uh, listeners are all familiar with, um, we are still the second largest online gaming market in the world. And the estimates this year that there will be, that the revenues will be over 400 million. So that clearly says to our AGA members that something needs to get done. And as you probably know, we are very much in favor of a federal regime. Now we don't mean federal regulation, but we do mean minimum standards that will eliminate the kind of patchwork quilt effect that would happen if you have a state by state um, regulatory structure. So we are very optimistic. We are going to continue to work very hard to see that something gets done, but Congress is Congress. That's true, and that, that actually reminded me of my follow-up question, uh, which was uh, dealing with the intrastate versus interstate. Of course, there is intrastate poker already being permitted. It's just about to start this month, I think, over at South Point Casino. Uh, th that is being allowed intrastate within Nevada, uh, but the, the, the federal is what I believe the Las Vegas large casino corporations would be more in favor of. It certainly uh, would eliminate a lot of uh, bureaucratic headache. Could you I expand a little bit upon what you were talking about uh, for the federal regime? Well, uh, why we believe a federal structure um, is, is important is that, um, yes, you can get the job done state by state by state. But what you're not, what you may be lacking, and what our members are concerned about is are you going to have consistent consumer protections in place? What's going to happen with the underage gambler? What's going to happen with controls and assistance for problem gamblers? Um, how are you going to deal with money laundering? And all of those issues. And that's why we think you need that federal structure, which will provide those minimum standards and protect your listeners as well as all the other consumers who are out there. All right, Ms. Patterson, thank you so much for coming on. Appreciate it. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Uh, you know, I, I hear rumors Elvis used to carry a, a pistol in his, his shoe. I can't lie, baby, I did. But I had to, I had to protect myself, baby. You know the fans, baby. Well, didn't Elvis also carry a pistol in his pants? A large one. <laughs> What's your name, man? My name is Russell Powell, down here on Fremont Street, seven days a week. Other no, otherwise known as Elvis Aaron Presley. Get a hold of me if you need some bookings, anything. I'll help you out, baby. Well, give Priscilla my love, man. Thanks so much for joining. And thank you guys for watching. See you next time on This Week in Gambling, baby. Right, baby. Thank you very much. Just stay in your happy spot.